is to add comments around it so you know it's the background. Maybe backgrounds. Because it, uh, the way it reads it, it reads from sprite batch .begin, and then it draws each line if it's got sprite batch .draw, it draws it from back to forward. So if you want a splatter to be on top, you draw it last. So let's do sprite batch .draw. Go ahead and do enemy so it's on behind it. We we'll use method number six, helper. Number six, position. No, you don't want to draw the rectangle, we just want to check it. Color, dot white, zero F, enemy org, one. We don't want to multiply by anything but itself, none, and then zero. A bit of, bit of code, but that's about usually the com most common way of drawing sprites, effectively. Don't worry, and once you get comfortable with this, it becomes a second nature, so don't worry about what all that means. I'll explain it in a little bit. Color, dot white, zero F, player, origin, one, sprite effects, dot none and zero basically what it does it starts off by drawing the image at whatever you positioned it does it have a rectangle we use, does it draw a rectangle we use null because we do not want to draw the rectangle we just want to make sure it's there no color for color modifications no rotation the origin will be our enemy origin and the float scale which basically how many times it's multiplied in size we don't want to do any so we do one so it's multiplied by one sprite effects which is basically flipping it or rotating it anyway which is none we put and the last one is its layer depth which we will put zero so it's in front now let's run these and see if it works As you can see, we have our sprites drawn and our background displayed in the back. Very good. Let's go ahead and close this. Okay. Now what we want to do is add some movement, which is very easy. There's an easier way to do keyboard checking, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it the old-fashioned way. The long way. Now this checks if the keyboard key, if it's down, key dot left. Basically checking if you are pressing the left key. Go ahead and copy paste those. Right, down, up, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, close, 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 curly bracket, curly bracket, copy those. Now, if it's move, if we're holding left, we we'll want it to go left. So do player position dot x minus equals for a good number is usually four. We want to go right, we we'll do player position dot x plus equals four. Down a little trickier because it's not P minus equals actually y plus equal four, and then player position dot y minus equal four. The Y scale in X and A is inverted, so keep that in mind when you are using it for movement or adding to it or so. Now we'll check for for collision. Very easy. For re basic rectangular collision, I would not recommend this for more uh, higher quality games as it's not very precise. But here we go. If player rect dot intersects enemy rect. See? That easy. Basically all we want to do is have it reset this position. So, play position. 
dot x equals zero. Player position dot y equals zero. Let's save and run. Let's press down. It goes down, right, it goes right, up, and left. And you can angles if you wanted to. It's very simple. Now we'll try touching the enemy. As you can see, I died. And there you have it. Basic way to draw sprites, move them, check for collision, and draw a background. And the next tutorial, we'll probably look at a more advanced way of collision. Maybe sound or anything else you might suggest. So feel free to suggest any more. Thank you and hope you enjoyed this tutorial.